Suppose now that I give you a straight line, so we have a xy plane here, and then I have a straight line coming in this way, so we know that the equation of that line is mx plus b, and this contains all the information we need to know about that line, we, know, we have the gradient, and we have the y-intercept, so basically you could cross the y-axis at some point b, and that's it, that's how we define a line in two dimensions. Now let's say we extend this to three dimensions, how do we actually represent the line in three dimensions? You might be inclined to think that if we have a straight line coming in this way, we can define it in terms of z, so we would say something like maybe ax plus by plus some constant c. So we could easily say, okay, so c has to be the, the z-intercept, and then this and this are going to give us the gradients of along the, the x and the y directions, but you would be wrong because this is the equation of a plane, not the equation of a line. So how do we actually define a straight line in three dimensions? It actually turns out a little bit more tricky than you might think. But the easiest way to do it is say, let's say that I know a point that lies on that line, and then, well, obviously you need two points, and then let's say you draw a vector so let's say you draw some vector that points in the direction of that line. Let's call it R0. So in essence, so basically, okay, so you have point R0. R0 is going to represent the, the distance from the origin to that point. And then V, so I'm going to draw V in a, in a different color. V is just going to give you a direction. So let's say V here is giving you the direction in which that line is pointing. So we can express the equation of a line, so the line is going to be represented by some in vector quantity. It's going to be equal to R0, which is the vector pointing from the origin to some point P, plus T, so T is going to be a parameter, times V. Alright, so basically this is how we parameterize the equation of a line in three dimensions. Parametric simply means that we're expressing everything in terms of a parameter that we choose. So how does this work? Well, let, let's say I give you a point in space, point P, 0, minus 1, and 3. And let's say I want you to find the direction of a line that crosses that point that goes in the direction of the following vector. So basically, the vector 2, 4, 5. Okay, so basically what you're doing here is you're drawing a line, that a point somewhere around here. So we have 0 here, then minus 1 in the y direction. So the point P would be somewhere here. So this would be our vector R0. And then V is actually pointing in a different direction. So basically this would go 2 here, 4 here, and then 5. So basically the vector is actually pointing like this. So this is the line that we would be defining. It's the line pointing in the direction of this vector. If we translated that vector from the origin to some other point there. Essentially this is just the line that goes in the direction of V that crosses the point P. That's how we define that line. So all we need to do now is we create a vector for P. So basically R0 is going to go from the origin to this coordinate. So that's just going to be 0, minus 1, and 3. And now our vector v is already given, so the equation of a line in parametric form is going to be the following. So we're going to have 0, minus 1, and 3, plus the parameter t, times 2, 4, and 5. And when you multiply a scalar by a vector, essentially you're multiplying every component by that scalar. So this is going to come out to be 0 plus 2t, that's 2t minus 1 plus 4t, that's minus 1 plus 4t. And finally, we have 3 plus 5t. So it turns out that our equation for the line is a parametric equation in terms of parameter t. So basically, if we put some constant t in here, like 1 or 2, then we can calculate the coordinates of the point it is actually um, representing the point that lies on that line. And all we need to do now is, well, we can express this in terms of, of the components. So for example, the x component is 2t, the y component is minus 1 plus 4t, and the z component is 3 plus 5t. 
So that is it. That's how you represent the equation of a line in three dimensions. And we need to have this parametrization because otherwise we would not be able to actually represent the line in three dimensions because of the issues we already pointed out. So this is how you represent the line in three dimensions. And in general, any curve in three dimensions needs to be represented as a parametric equation. So just to give you another really interesting example, I'm going to draw the z-axis here. Then I'm going to have my xy plane here. So that's my xy plane. And I'm going to extend it there. And let's say I draw something like a helix. So you know that a helix is kind of like a spring. It goes like this around and around, but it's always, it, it is always uh, changing position. So basically it's going around in a kind of a spiral fashion. But if it is not changing direction, we can actually represent that curve in three dimensions using parametric equations. There is a way in which we can represent this. So for example, if we look at it from the top, so let's say I have my X and Y here. This thing is really just going around in this kind of fashion, so it might actually be decreasing radius and then increasing. But in general, there are two parameters that we can look at. We can look at the radius, so if the radius is changing, it would just be represented as a function of some other parameter. Now, if we draw, so if we draw a circle here, x and y, then we can actually project that component of the radius onto the x and y plane by using simple trigonometry. So basically, we could say that x equals to r cosine of theta, where theta is just the angle of rotation here, and then y is just going to be r sine theta. Now, if we make both of those our parameters, then all we need to do is write a parametric equation for this helix. And it turns out that the parametric equation for a helix, so I'm going to draw it as follows. Let's say the vector helix is going to be the following. We're going to have x component, which is r cos theta, then r sine theta. And what would be the set component? Because it is actually just going linearly up. It is always increasing in this direction. So it is just actually going to be a constant times theta. So it's going to be a linear equation in this direction. So that's how you represent a helix in three dimensions in terms of a parameter theta. And if the radius is changing, you can also reflect that change. So this would, have, this would be a, a, an equation of two parameters instead. But that's a really interesting thing that is, um, uses vector definitions to represent uh, curves in three dimensions. And it just comes to show that things can get a little bit more complicated. But with the use of vectors, we can actually simplify things quite a lot. So that's a really nice application of vectors there.